Good morning, Your Grace. Good morning, Father. What do you see as the challenges facing African religious missionaries? Yeah, I look at it from two perspectives. Uh, first of all, coming from the African family, village, worldview background, I still recognize that we generally are newcomers into Christianity and some of the uh, customs, traditions, and ways of uh, living continue to dog our steps or challenge us. And in many ways, we as uh, African religious missionaries, whether diocesan or belonging to religious congregations, have to deal with uh, challenges coming from our families, uh, from our homes, from our religious cultural background. We are still largely spiritistic. There are still uh, references to the deities, the spirit forces. Uh, that is why even my good friend and classmate, uh, Father Eugene Uzuku, has written a book on the question of God, spirits, and Christianity, uh, helping to raise that factor of challenges coming from an African background. And even in my own culture, we have um, this residual uh, discrimination between humans uh, that I'm fighting to resolve by getting every Igbo person, for example, to realize that we are not freeborn or slave born any longer, but we need to be reborn in Christ to recognize the equal dignity of all humans. As Archbishop of Oweri, you know the Spiritans very well and their missionary work in Nigeria. What do you see as the future for Spiritan missionaries in your region? Well, since the Spiritan presence has been the major uh, instrument of evangelization in my own part of uh, uh, the country and in other parts, particularly southeast and uh, uh, south south of Nigeria. I see, first of all, that the missionary spirit that the Spirit has brought into my world will continue through the local churches. On the other hand, uh, since the, the Spiritans are still with us as a congregation working, and we recognize that their uh, congregational institutional presence is also a continued stimulus for us to continue with the missionary legacy. I see that both the diocesan clergy and the Spiritans will continue to work together in a complementary way, since it's a treasure to have both uh, the Spiritans and the diocesans uh, working together to the glory of God. We have begun preparation for a general chapter in 2020. What are some of the themes we, as Spiritans, should address? Well, as I was trying to uh, refer to in the first question, now let me use the opportunity to say that the Spiritans will continue to deal with uh, part of the elements of the African traditional culture and also deal with the digital world, uh, this world of mass communication that is also influencing people in their beliefs. So the, it will be good to look at both residual African elements of religion and culture, as well as the secularization challenges coming particularly through the media. Well, the media is useful, but 
you need to be more critical in the use of uh, modern means of technology and communication. The bishops of Nigeria wrote about the latest massacre in the church of Mbalom. Is this latest attack a turning point in the relationship between church and state? Uh, definitely uh, this um, tragedy uh, that has reached such a peak has indeed almost drawn a battle line. But I hope that it will not just be uh, a battle line from the point of view of uh, continued fighting, but a moment to think more deeply about the future of the nation. And given that the church has been a major voice in the nation, in the state of Nigeria, I believe that it's uh, an opportunity for us to think more deeply and across the board about the future of Nigeria, which we can present to the, to the nation, to the state, because the church is there to help bring justice, peace, and development to the nation. What could be the prophetic role of the church in your country? Well, the church has in fact been playing this uh, prophetic role, speaking truth to power. In fact, since uh, June 12, 1993, when uh, the best democratic elections took place and these elections were cancelled by the military dictator, it set the church uh, more into the public arena. That's why the Catholic Church has been a voice that is both awaited and sometimes dreaded by the government because uh, the church has been speaking true to power. I must say that I was part of a, a delegation of archbishops in 1994 that went to the um, military dictator, military head of state, to protest against continued military rule in Nigeria. Even though we were not given that welcome, but that was uh, an indication that the bishops were ready to speak truth to power no matter what it costs. Thank you very much, Your Grace. Thank you. God bless you, Father Eves. Yeah.